big replay. Presented by Town & Country, Vox Adian, Victor Glass and Modular Metals. Welcome now to the West Australian Football League replays. Uh, should I say replays? Today we have one replay, Bob. We've decided, and I think it's a good idea, that uh, considering the importance of the match, that's the game between Claremont and Swans and what a tremendous game it was, and seeing that they're the two top sides at the end of the qualifying period in our competition, that we should uh, devote our whole replay to that particular match. And I'm sure that you go along with that too. I do agree, Gary. I was down there yesterday. Tremendous game of football. It had everything. Crowd, atmosphere, great football. Jam-packed with interest, and of also uh, I think the crowd held their breath when unfortunately Phil Cracker went down. Uh, we're only going to show it to you once now because we'll have more on it in the World of Football show. But here's the incidents leading up to that particular event. We've got it in slow motion for you at this particular time. I'm sure you'll agree again, Bob, that it was a fair bump, but one of those things that happens in football. Yes, a good solid shirt front, Gary. And this was set the pattern in the first quarter, and what a great first quarter it was, and a very, very hard one. Commiserations to uh, Phil Cracker. Uh, our latest word on Phil is that uh, he's still in Royal Perth Hospital, but apparently quite OK. But we'll have more on Phil Cracker and that particular episode later with Frank Sparrow and the boys in World of Football. What about the other matches played? I guess most of them not very important, but nevertheless, we'll run through the scores. East Perth 17-15 defeated East from Adel 12-10. It's goodbye to the Blue and Whites. Yes, uh, East Perth used it yesterday to switch players around and try them for the semi. East Fremantle looking for players for next year. The South Fremantle record score, 40 goals, 18, to West Perth, 12-6, and not a very uh, bright end to the season for West Perth. Very disappointing, but congratulations, South. Shows a football club as human. Allowed Tony Morley to play his 200th game. Well done. Well done, Tony Morley. Subiaco, 26-15, to Perth, 18-16, and Subiaco finished on a high note. Great improvement. Fifth place. Perth needed three players at the start of the year. Didn't get them. Let's hope they get them next year. Well, let's bring up the action right now but the game that everybody's been talking about one of the best matches played in a long long time in western australia it's the clash between clemont and swans we pick up play in the third quarter perfect conditions the breeze blowing towards the scoreboard playing for another factor Moss on the ball post a side bottom holden rents good tackle tom pierce to watson he's gone backwards to blackwell now the tigers are going towards the railway in Ralph. Hoverley battling. It's a half forward for the Tigers. Daniels doesn't want it. Now he's still battling on. Alan Daniels got no backup. Can't kick left foot. So he comes around on his right. Puts it towards Farmer. Oh! Beautiful mark. Brett Farmer, the mark of the match. And well captured there by our TBW cameraman. Well done by our director and all the technicians. A beautiful piece of work by Channel 7 cameraman down there to bring that down. Brett Farmer right down to the ground. There he is, 10 metres out. Deserves a goal. And he'll get it. Well done, Channel. And well done, Daniels and Farmer. Well, there's no doubt about Shorty Daniels. For a while, he appeared the black guard in pace. As too does uh, Brett Farmer. But Daniels went on with it with the scrimmage to the half-forward flank. Did it on his own, got clear, and then a magnificent floating mark by Farmer, as you saw, to pull it down, and that gives him a total of 75 goals, 30 for the season. A magnificent effort in his first year of league football, and that gives Claremont a four goals to one, or a four goal one to two three lead in the Marlborough 5000. Yes, that could have been a $5,000 mark. Comments by Bob Miller, as here's the man Moss gets yet another tap. That could be the move that uh, the Tigers needed. Melrose in the centre, back to side bottom. The pace is a cracker at the moment. The leader's on to Beasley in front. Punched away nicely by Betts, picked up by Rance. One goal already, two goals already to Rance. Hansberg can't handle it, or can he? Hansberg scores! Now oh, it's a kick. It's a kick for a push in the back. Oh, a little bit lucky to get away with that one, I think. Well, we said that the luck had favoured Swans all day. Maybe it's turn. Well, maybe it has. It's a, a kick coming from Beecroft, and it's a good 65 metre looking for Marsh. Using the body. Back of the pack, it's Cantor. Claremont have got new life. Back comes Cantor. Centre of the ground. Look at that fighting, but there he comes. Magical Phil. He's over the half forward line. He's having a shot towards Phil forward. has gone through for four points and another great goal to the black and white from the boot of Philip Markle. Well, that's Philip Markle's first goal. We said that he'd been an instigator of at least six others, but if 
Philip Narkel is a contender for the Channel 7 Sandover medal voting on Monday night. And his performance for two and three quarters at the moment have been simply superb and he must be polling well in the eyes of Ross Capes and Ron Power. 15-8 playing 11-9. A topsy turvy game as Cranesburg's rucking now for Swans and Melrose again gets it away from the centre. There's the other danger man in Holden, sets it up high. Watch Richardson fly back up by Aitken. Now, what he's back on the ball. Here comes the other booted player, Nisham. Looks as though he's playing water polo out there. Aitken comes back on his own. Gets rid of uh, Nowotny, that was good play, as now Blackwell has a chance again to drive the Tigers forward. Sutton in front. The Rocket to Boulder today at centre-half back. Good mark, Darrell Sutton. Eye on the ball all the way. He's on the half-back line at the moment. He's setting the game up now. A good long kick to half-forward, looking for Rance. With him is Harper. And Baden Harper. The players on both sides have been switched all around the ground by the respective coaches. Harper playing on the ball, playing at half-back, and now takes a good mark. Looking for Jamison, William is Sutton. Fitzgerald. He boots it back to half-forward. Harper again underneath it. Oh, didn't use the body, but it goes to Tom Pierce. A wobbly kick goes to the centre. Jimmy Cracker. Back to Watson. In trouble. Blackwell to Jamison. Jamison 45 metres out. Will he kick another one? I think he will. Won't make the distance. Malaxis gets it. He has put it through for his fourth goal. Great passenger play to the Tigers and what a quarter of football. Well, it's been a long time since Western Australia has been treated to sharp shooting, scoring goals of that calibre. And Steve Malaxis has been doing it all year. That's his fourth goal for the match and he started the match with 70 goals, 27. But... That's the exciting excitement that brings people to watch players of football. It reminds me of those of the late Vicky French for East Fremantle. He used to wear number four and shoot him over his shoulder. 27 goals scored, and only one by Ralph and one by Beeson. This shows you the strength, too, of the forward lines of both players, doesn't it? Plenty of opportunities as Moss is back on the ball. Big thump goes to nowhere. Keith Narkle sharks it. Kicks again out to the flank to Richardson. He's being well held now by Aitken. There's the tussle between those two players. The shovel out favours Philip Markle. Here's danger. Good pass. Just goes over the side bottom of his head. Plenty of openings if he gets, gets it. Beasley taps it on a niche and shut the gate. Oh, what combination play. Call it volleyball. Call it what you like. But there's six points on the board now for the black and whites. Yes, third goal of, uh, to Jared Neesham. And great combination there by the three forwards to get done over. Read it well. Beasley, side bottom, Nisham all combining. Didn't matter who kicked the goal, but it was a black and white Guernsey. And uh, this one's moved to 16-8, 12-9 by Claremont. A great quarter of football here at Claremont Oval, 22 minutes in.